Well, New Year's Day has come and gone, and after a week off, Grim returns with our first cannon fodder of the new year, and it ain't a bad one. So, with no delays, let's get right to it. We open with some details on a Sangheili Ranger, featured in Hunters in the Dark, Kola Bauth. This Sangheili, like so many others, served with unwavering devotion in the Ranger forces in the time of the Covenant. In late 2552, however, he began receiving secret messages from his brother, who was serving with the soon-to-be heretic Cesarefumi. Despite Cess's demand to shut down all communication following first contact with 343 Guilty Spark, Cola's brother managed to send scattered messages detailing the truths revealed by the Oracle. In light of these messages, Cola's faith began to waver, and when the Great Schism broke out, he was all too ready to turn against the Prophets. Following the end of the Covenant War, the Arbiter managed to meet with Cola personally and tell of his brother's death at the Arbiter's hands. As an act of restitution, the Arbiter offered a place in his emerging Swords of Sanghelio's faction. With a chance to continue the fight that his brother had started, Kola accepted. In time, he found himself stationed on the Covenant Corvette Mayhem, and in 2555, was assigned to the joint human Sankili operation known as Farstorm. For the details on that mission, pick up the novel Halo Hunters in the Dark. Following that, we get a few community questions answered. The first asks what kind of Corvette Mayhem is, Covenant or Sankili design? The answer is that Mayhem is an SDV class heavy Corvette. The second question asks if UNSC air vehicles are returning to Halo multiplayer, to which Grimm answers yes. Kind of out of place for a cannon fodder article, but since Halo multiplayer is considered part of the canon, I guess I can't complain too much. Besides, I'm way too stoked about the prospect of UNSC air vehicles. Come on, 343, give us a Falcon. The final question this week asks, to quote, Where does the aesthetic for the Sunghili minor armor seen in H2A multiplayer fit into the Halo narrative? To sum up Grimm's answer, the armor isn't tied to the minor rank, but is a general design worn by Sanghili of various ranks. Basically, it's an iteration of the armor we saw commonly throughout Halo CE and Halo 2 slash Anniversary. I guess the logical follow-up would be, what's the difference between this one, the version from the campaign, the version in Halo Reach, and the version in Halo 3? Anyways, the article comes to a close, Grimm informs us about a couple comic collections coming out in the months ahead. First is a hardcover collection of the Fall of Reach comic series. Adapted from the novel by Eric Nyland, the comic does a significantly superior job of adapting the story in comparison to the animated series. Like, a significantly better job. It actually features the Fall of Reach. If for some reason you don't want to read Nyland's book or listen to the audiobook, I highly recommend this comic. In fact, even if you have read the book, I'd still recommend reading this. Beyond just adapting, the first section does a decent job of fleshing out Colonel Watts' character. The collection is out on March 16th. The second trade paperback is a collection of Halo Initiation and Halo Escalation issues 1-12. through 12. If you haven't read the Escalation comics, this is probably the best place to start. I could never recommend Halo Initiation to anyone, but this isn't a bad way to get it. Grimm also mentions cool extras, so I'll probably pick it up when it comes out on May 11th. And that wraps up the main article, bringing us to the new universe entries. This week we have the Protectors of the Mantle, the Guardians, and the Protector of the Domain, the Warden Eternal. As we know, the Guardians were largely used to enforce peace on species deemed belligerent. Along with the EMP weapon seen at the end of Halo 5, Guardians are said to have other tools at their disposal. Hopefully we'll get to see some of those in the next main Halo title. As many figured, the Guardians were largely useless against the Flood, and the EMP weapon didn't work against Forerunner or other sufficiently advanced technology. You could probably take that to mean that the Guardians weren't of much use against ancient humanity either. Prior to the firing of the Halo Array, the Guardians were buried until they could be called upon to serve the Mantle again. The Warden is, like the Guardian entry, largely repeat info. He's an AI construct that can inhabit numerous bodies at once. Any direct connection to the Prometheans and or the Didact, though, remains unknown. When Cortana entered the Domain, the Warden was awoken and, convinced of Cortana's potential to succeed where the Forerunners had failed, offered his aid to her. From there, we know the story as presented in Halo 5. Despite the disputes seen in the game, particularly towards the end, he remains dedicated to her. Interestingly, the only reason he allowed the Master Chief and Blue Team to enter Genesis was to allow Cortana to interact with the physical world. It seems she needed a real Reclaimer to open the Domain and enact her plan. So, in case any of you were wondering if the Librarian actually intended AIs to reclaim the mantle instead of humanity, there you go. Anyway, that wraps things up for today. A nice start to a new year full of possibilities. Before we go, know that, as of the making of this video, the Shadow of Intent review has been voiced and will go live this upcoming week.
Until then, this has been Halo Cannon, and I'll see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.